Okay, so homework number three. Now, this is not due till next Friday, um, but let's just get started on it. Um, so question number one. So it's asking three, four, one. In fact, why don't I just make, make one up different? So basically, I'm just going to make some up like that. So how about, um, yeah, five, two, four, plus one, three, three, all in base six. These are both base six numbers. So now we want to think about adding and then subtracting in a different base so that you'll be really deeply understanding what's going on when you're teaching kids to borrow and carry in um, normal numbers. All right, so how does it work? So when I add 4 and 3, I'd like to write 7. But I can't write 7. We always start on the right side, don't we? We start on the right side because then we can carry things to the bigger place. So when I add 4 and 3, I'd like to write 7, but I can't write 7. There's no... There's no 7 in base 6. What's the biggest thing we're going to see in base 6? A 5. You can't make a 6 or a 7 or anything bigger. So what do you do? How do you do 7? Right? And, and if I carry, if I, if I carry something to here, what do I write down here? Yeah. Exactly. Let's talk about it. So let's think about what it means to carry to really, so we're going to think deep now about what it means to carry in a base system. Think about base 10. If we were adding, you know, 5, 2, 9 and 7, 3, uh, 2 in base 10, you all would go 9 and 2 is 11. So you'd put 1 up here and bring down 1, huh? What does that mean in base 10? That means you hit the 10 amount, you hit the base amount, and went one beyond it. 11 is 10 and one more, isn't it? So whenever you carry a one to the next column, what is that one representing? 10. That one, and that's what will be weird for kids at first. They'll go, no, it's just one. But you'll want to communicate to them, no, that's 10. Remember? So, think with me, the next column represents one of the base amounts. So in other words, if I'm wanting to write here 7, because 4 and 3 is 7, but I can't write 7, I want to carry, what does that carry represent? How much is that carry? It's 6, because I'm in base 6. It represents 6. And so if this is 6... And we have seven total. That gives us one more here. You know what might help? Let's draw some pictures. So let me, uh, remember the base 10 blocks I brought in last time and I showed them? Let me draw them now. So I'm going to draw this number, this five, two, four. In fact, forget about the stuff in the front. Let's just do, because I don't want to draw too much. <laughs> Let's just do the two, four. I'm going to draw for you. Now, I'm going to draw base six pieces. And you'll hand to kids base 10 pieces, but same idea. To help them with maybe the same confusion you're feeling right now. So let's do the So two means two of these. So two. There's the number two, four. That is two, four. It's two rods, right? It's... So that two, you have to realize, means two rods of length six. Now remember when I had the base ten? I put base ten pieces up last time. The, the, you know, the rods were ten long. Why? Because the next column was the tens place. Remember how the place values go? The, this, you know, let, let me just, you know, when you have the number 24, 24, this is the ones place and the sixes place, huh? So this is the sixes place. So two in the sixes place means Two sixes, two rods of length six. Just like it does in base 10, it means, if this is base 10, it would be two ten, twenty, 20, as you know. Everybody seeing that? And let's put underneath it 33. And so 33 is going to be three rods. Am 
my, um, my art skills. I know you're jealous. They're so impressive, huh? I got a C in art in seventh grade. That was the end of my art career. And I was trying that semester. Mr. Duran just did not see art the way I did, I guess. All right, so, so let me know. I know I'm real scribbly. Let me know if you can't read anything. All right, so two, four, and three, three. That's what they really are, huh? Because this is three in the ones place, right? Just three. But this is the sixes place again, right? We're in base six. So it's three rods of length six. It's three sixes. Okay, let's add them up now. So when we add up, we do the adding thing, I'm going to add all of these. You think, well, there's seven of them. Just count them. Seven. Right. Seven, but I can't write a seven. So what am I going to do? I'm going to carry now. Look at, look at what happens when we carry. If you're going to carry something to the next column, what, what goes into the next column? Only sixes, right? The next column is the sixes column. So let me just want to change the color there. So what, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry six of them to this column. That's carrying. And what does it carry? A rod of length six. Do you all see that? That's what's physically happening. Six of these. This is six of them, right? These six individuals make a rod, don't they? That's what goes on in base 10. For 10. Does that make sense? When we add in base 10, when I add 29 and 12, and I say, well, that's 11, that's one 10 amount, one in the tens column and one more. Do you see what this is? This is one rod in the sixes column and one extra piece. That's why it's one extra piece is left here. You with me? And now, what, what do we have in the next column? Maybe I should, am I making it too hard? <laughs> What if that was a two? I'm going to change the problem. I didn't mean to make it too hard. All right. That's a little easier now. Let's change the problem. And so now, to make it easier, do an easier problem. So now, so everybody see what happened. I carried these pieces to the next column. And so there's only one left over. And then one, two, three, four, five rods. 51. Done. Does that make sense? So let's go back and do it mechanically. Four and three make seven, but you can't write a seven. You carry, and remember, that's six with one left over. That's how you do the seven. Carry six, leave one over. Carry the six, leave one over. See that? That's what carrying really is. It's carrying a whole rod into the next column for whatever the base amount is. So that one, and then, you know, that's just five, and we're done. Right? So you've got to remember what things mean in the next column. Is that good? How are we doing? Questions I can answer? Want to try one? Can yeah. Yeah, I will. Okay. Let me build up slowly, though. Okay. All right. So let's try, um, how about 13 and 13. <laughs> All right, let's do that. Base 4. All right, give it a go. Yeah, we'll practice slowly, then we'll build up to the kiddos. Some of those are hard. So when you're in base 4, every time you hit 4, you've got to carry and bring down the left over. Does that make sense? So just 3 and 3 is 6. But you hit 4. So carry away 4. I mean 1, which represents 4. And bring down the leftovers. So 3 and 3 is 6. But, but we can't write 6. Instead we say, okay, anytime you hit 4 or more, you can't write a 4 in base 4. You've got to carry. So I put a 1 here. What is that one really representing though? Four. Because he's in the big, he's in the, remember the place value? This is the one's place, the four's place, isn't it? Anything you write in the next five is worth four, isn't it? 
So that, I just took away four from my six. What's left? Two. And then one, 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 32. Base four, done. Is that making sense? So anytime you carry, well, anytime you hit the base amount, you're carrying. So if you're in base four, when you hit four, carry away four. All right? All right, good. So again, with how would, you, how would you write this with the little base pieces? I don't know if this is helpful or not. So there's one, three. One, three. See how the, the rods are of length three now? Because that's the three's place, isn't it? Right? The one's place. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're base four. What am I doing? That's crazy. So let me try that again. Those are four length because we're in the base four system. There we go. All right, so there are four length because we're in the base four system, right? Because this is the one's place, the four's place, isn't it? So anything in the second column represents four length, really, doesn't it? So it's a rod, yeah. So you're adding 13 base four and 23 base four, and it comes out to... Yeah. Yeah, you guys are wanting to go to bigger places. Hey, Seuss, right? Yeah, we'll get, and I'll get there. I will. Let's, I'll make sure we're all together before we jump there. So, so, what, so let me just show you mechanically what just happened then. So we just said, there's a, there's a rod, so we jumped that as another rod. And we said there, these, these two came down, and then we had three rods and 32. That's what just physically happened, right? Because the next column is the fours column. Okay, yeah. Now, Jesus' question is a really good one. How about, let's go, let's go 23 and 13. Base 4, base 4. Give it a go. So, let's see if you can figure it out. If it, if it helps, draw some pieces. Draw it out. All right, three and three is six. We, we can't have six. So we carry, that's four, right? Anytime you hit four or more, you gotta carry. So you carry away four, that leaves two. Good, now, next column. Well, that's four. Oh, but we can't write four. So what do we do? You carry to the next column. How many did we just carry? Whenever you carry to the next column, you carried... That's probably confusing for you. It's still four. That is four. You think, no, but that's the 16s. Yeah, but that's four of the fours. I'll, I'll draw the pieces. It'll make more sense. There's the answer. 102. Base four. Let me draw it. I think it'll make more sense if I draw it. So... So some of the confusion... Because you might be thinking... I, I, I'm just guessing what's going through your mind. But I, but I have done this for years, so I... Kind of know what the author will go through students' minds. So you might think, wait, so that's the 16th column. Though. So if I do one that's 16, yeah, but it's four of the four. So let me show it. I keep saying it, and then it's no help if I don't show it. So, so there's the 23, right? And here's the, the 13. Okay? So think about what just happened physically. So anytime you gather up four, that's the next thing, right? Because let's, let's do the columns, just to be super clear. So, here we go. This is the, you know, this is the ones column, the fours column, the sixteens column, right? In the base four system. So in the base four system, one times four times four, right? This is the sixteens column. What do I mean sixteens? What are these? These are flats. Oops, can... <laughs> that are four by four flats. See, they're four rods of link four. That's what's in that column. Okay, anyway, let's, let's do the problem. So here we go. So one, two, three, four. That brings a rod, wherever you want to bring it, doesn't matter, to the next column. Right? And then there's just two ones left over. And now we have four rods. That's one of those things, isn't it? Do you see that? So it's one big flat, no rods, and two units. That's what just happened. Do, so do you see that four of anything becomes one of the things in the next column, doesn't it? Even though that's the 16th column, what is a big flat 16? It's four, it's four rods. 
It's four. So, so really, all you just got to keep doing is thinking about four, huh? Because the next column is always four of the previous column. Do you get the idea? So anytime you hit four in any column, carry and bring down the remainder. So let's try it again. Is that making sense? So what if we had 32, okay, let's go 132 and 213, base four. We'll do base four, and then we'll start moving around the bases, and we'll go, go to the actual homework. All right, try that one. Ten minutes left. Let's see if we can do a couple more before we're, before we're out of time. These take a lot of our time. So as you add up, anytime you hit four, carry to the next column and bring down the remainder. What's what was left from the four? So 3 and 2 is 5, but we can't do 5. So we say 4, or no, not 4. So we carry, which is 4, with 1 left over. That's how I deal with the 5, right? Carry away 4, bring down the 1 extra. Is that good right there? Now, add these up. That's 5 again. What does that mean? Carry away 4, bring down 1 extra. Okay, good. Add these up. What's that? Four. Can't write four. Carry away four to the next column. No extra when you carry away four. Bring down that one. 1011. Base four. How many got it? 1011. Okay, good. So I just know speed up to so about half. How about half? Questions, comments? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If that helps you. I'd be glad to. And you can do that for yourself all the time. And kids, it'll help kids draw it, physical pieces. So, um, yeah. So there's that. Next column, we're going to go, what is it, three rods. And these are length four. So three and then one rod. And then next column is one flat. So it's a four by four flat, they call these, in the math manipulatives world. Oops, my squares are getting less square. <laughs> All right, you have to bear with my artwork. Okay, so, and then, so there's the different columns, right? So, so we're adding the number... One, three, two, with the number two, one, three, and the various, right? Because this is the, the one's place, the four's place, the 16. See, all these can have 16 in them, don't they? They're all four by four flats. Okay, so when we're adding these up, what just happened? Well, we just um, gathered together one, two, three, four of those, traded them in for a new rod in the next column. So they're gone. They left and went to the next column. That's called carrying. What's left over is the one. And then here, one, two, three, four, any four. You circle any four you want. Those four oops, turn into a new flat. Wait, where, oh, did I just go back a page? <laughs> Sorry. Very confusing. Um, turn into a new flat. Don't they? Whoops, I made too many there. Anyway, whatever. You get it turn into a new flat. See how, see how those four rods, any four, you can grab these four, those any four, turn into a new flat. So then what are we left with here? We're left with one here. And now the next column, we have four flats. What do four flats make? A big cube. I didn't bring it in. I just didn't want it in my briefcase. Yes, Wednesday. But the next thing goes three-dimensional. It goes, it's a cube. It's a four by four cube. Like a big Rubik's cube, but instead of three by three, it's four by four. Right? Can you picture it? That's a four by four. With kids, you're not going to do base four. That would be, that would be very confusing for them. You're going to do base ten, and you would show them it's a ten by ten by ten cube, and say, that's the thousands place. Because it's ten by ten by ten. 
It's, it's, a, it's a 10 by 10 flat, which is 100, and there's 10 of those. So it's 1,000. So every one of those cubes represents 1,000, because this is the thousands column over here. In the base 10 system, we, we would carry one of these to the next because anytime you have four of anything, you carry to the next column, it makes one of the next thing. So that leaves one here, nothing there. 101, one, one, I can't draw it well. Try there, boom, boom, that's because I guess it's three dimensional cube. All right, so let's try. Time is running on us. Let's try. So it's base six. All right, so try that. So anytime you hit six, you got to carry away six of them, right? Anytime you get six, carry, and that represents six. Next, we'll be going to subtracting, which involves borrowing, which is like carrying backwards, basically. <coughs> Not today. Next week. Just little bites here. Math is best in little bites. All right, so four and one make six. I'll just do the columns, if that helps. Four and three make seven, but we can't write, we're in base six, so five, the five is fine, but the seven is not. All right, you didn't carry on the five, did you? Okay, so, so the seven, I can't write seven, I'm in the base six system, so I can't write seven. I carry, and what does that represent? That represents six. So there's one left over, because that's the seven. Maybe it'd help if I, Wrote the seven and crossed it off and put a one. Whatever helps you. So that makes sense. So when you carry that six and the other column, that's five. So there we go. Five one five. Five one five. How many got that? Five one five. Good. Making sense. Questions, comments. Let's try one. How many else to practice? So let me let me just make some up here. How about two t e one. 3t base 12. All right. I'll finish with this. So we're in base 12, so you carry whenever you get 12 or 1. Right? Just like in our system, base 10, we carry when we get 10 or 1. Right, let me jump in and help before we run out of time. That's 10 and 11. I'll do it, maybe I'll do it over here on the side. That's 11 and 10. It's 21. So I'll just carry this over here on the side. It's 21. Now, what do I do with 21? Well, that's certainly more than 12. I've got to carry a 1. And what does that 1 represent? 12. I just carried away 12 of the 21 here. I just carried away 12 of it. So subtract 12, what are you left with, 9? So 9 are left over in that column. And now, 10 and 1 and 3 is 13, but we can't write 13. Carry away 12, and you're left with 1. <laughs> yeah, I was just testing you. Good job. Yes, boy, that's embarrassing. The math teacher can't add. 10, 11, 14, that leaves 2. Carry away 12, and then that's just 4. So 4, 2, 9. Is that good? Is that making sense? So next week we'll subtract 